our prize is really about openness. Um, so let me just go into that a little, little bit more. You know, if you want to do a juried show focused exclusively on panda reproduction issues, that's really awesome, and you should go for it. Uh, and we will do everything we can to help you do that show within the art prize framework. Like the the the, the cash prize is not is not a, a, uh, an ends of itself. It's merely a uh, a way to get attention from the public. It's a way to get participation from the public, and from that we can do all sorts of crazy and amazing things. And I want to see like what we can all do. Um, you know, if you want to sell your work, you can absolutely do that. We're not taking any commission on that. Venue owners, if you want to make that a part of your hosting agreement, you're free to do that. But again, that's something that we want to let people figure out what they want to do with that. Um, so week one, uh, you'll be able to vote uh, in the entire universe of things that are submitted for our prize. Uh, week two, it will be within the top 10. And then October 8th, we'll announce the winners. Artprize.org is the matching tool and uh, the registration tool for artists and venues. Christy will be up in a minute to take you through that a little more in a little more detail. Um, let me just speak about venues a sec. This very straight river. Uh, this is the area that we're talking about. Um, I, I realize there are kind of big concentrations of studios and stuff outside of this, and we'd be very open to talking to people about kind of concentrations outside of this, but just so everybody can get their mind around it, this is the area that we're talking about. So if you have a venue in this place, you can do a venue. And it's really about that three square miles and opening up the possibility of that. Um, so venue owners, you know, if you want to curate your space yourself, okay, uh, you can find somebody to help, and we really suggest finding help, and we're going to be continuously um, uh, working on uh, hooking you up with people that can help you curate your space in more professional ways. Um, from our perspective, you know, find that interesting space that you think is totally underutilized and, and neglected and turn it into something wonderful and amazing. Like, if you have the most controversial work, like, get together with a whole bunch of other controversial folks and find a space. It's three square miles. You can, you can figure something out. Uh, hundreds of buildings, you know, hundreds of thousands of, of land, uh, landlords for you to, to, to do. Uh, times for the venues. This is really kind of what we're looking for, for uh, minimum hours. And again, this, as Jeff said, this is kind of a, an ongoing process, and we get a lot of feedback that these are too short or too long or whatever. Like, we're, we're willing to work on these things. Um, opening night, 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Monday through Thursday, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Again, these are minimums, uh, just so we can have kind of a continuity of experience for the general public. Uh, Friday through Saturday, 12 p.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, Sunday, 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. And then the kind of the dates and timeline. April 23rd, obviously, the registration is open right now. Uh, July 31st, artist and venue registration will end. Two weeks after that, we want you to have your hosting agreements complete. And let me be very clear about this. Like, we are not dictating any sort of terms between you as an artist and, and, and as a, a venue. That, that's all about you figuring that whole thing out. It's just about we're trying to do as little uh, framework as we can to, to let sort of novel arrangements develop. Um, September 23rd, opening night. We'll have kind of a big celebration for that. October 1st, we'll, have, we'll announce the top 10. And October 8th, we'll announce the winners. Um, and October 10th, the exhibition closes. Now you can, and th these are kind of questions that Kevin and Dave will get to, which I'll introduce you to in a few, but uh, those are, again, minimums. If you want to set up way before that, more power to you. If you want to stay around for another year after the, the exhibition kind of formally closes, that's great too. Uh, let me just kind of go through things that our prize is doing. Um, building the, the registration for artists and system for artists and venues. Um, we're pr providing artists and venue support. Dave and, and Kevin are dedicated each to, you know, one of them to venues, one of them to artists, and we're going to be adding uh, staff folks to help with that. We're building the voting system. 
Uh, we'll be building the, the, the mapping and word of mouth system to make you findable and shareable. Again, having that real-time stream of how people are reacting to work and uh, visualizing that in interesting and creative ways on maps and helping people kind of plan their route through Grand Rapids to look at all the amazing things you're doing. All sorts of printed materials and swag, which of course all, every regist, regist, or, you know every person that gets a venue will get a cool t-shirt and stuff like that. Don't hold me to the t-shirt, it might be something else. But uh, Events, you know, parties throughout the, throughout the time, and educational programming. Again, this is, this is about um, creating that framework and letting people do things and, and, and creating the, having the professional voice kind of speak within that, but ultimately let the public be the ones that, that decide it. So that's kind of my overview. I'll let uh, Christy, Christy Kappinga, with her fancy lapel mic, come up now to kind of walk you through some of the stuff Check. on the website. Thanks, Rick. So, hi, my name's Christy. I work for Pomegranate Studios, who's basically responsible for uh, building this website. Um, I'm going to just walk you through a really brief uh, registration process. Uh, you're probably going to have more questions, but I'm going to be available afterwards out there to take feedback or uh, help walk you through the process in person. Um, so let's say you're just going to sign up as a basic user just to check out the site. We try to keep this process as basic as possible, so just provide your name. Oops. Isn't this fun doing things in front of people? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Zip code is optional. Sign up to receive updates might be a good idea, considering there's lots of information that might need to be communicated later on. Accept the terms of use. And that's pretty much your basic sign up. All you need is a valid email address to do it. Success. Um, when you click continue, it'll take you to your logged in you page, which is basically going to work as a dashboard, so to speak, for um, the forms that you'll manage as an artist or as a venue. I'm just going to click into them and show you briefly what these entail. Kevin and Dave will actually maybe give a little bit more detail on these. The artist profile is about you as a person and um, just your basic information. Asterisks are required. Um, it includes the artist bio and the statement. And then um, by accepting the artist agreement, this will make you an artist uh, in the Art Prize website. <coughs> I'm not going to fill all that out. We don't have time. Um, upon completing that and actually being recognized as an artist on this site, um, you'll be able to pay your fee, which actually, um, yeah, if you follow that process, uh, will make sense. Right now, a lot of people are getting to this step number three and looking at this uh, little box that says tool not available, and they think it's because they've done something wrong. But the truth is, we're still building it. So when it has a little orange hand, don't think you've done anything wrong. Um, I believe that's slated to come out in the next couple weeks, two weeks, Bill says. Um, so really, in terms of your artist profile, entering your work, which I'll actually show you now, it's really in your best interest to fill these out as thoroughly as you possibly can right now. 